Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks for our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are going to investigate the unsung hero of distribution fitting tests. That is, the Kramer von Mises goodness of fit test. We have already got a whole series of videos where we have investigated the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, the Anderson Darling test, the Chi Square test, and the Koeper test, but some academics actually believe that the Kramer von Mises test is the most powerful of them all. So, why is it not as famous as the other tests? So, this video is dedicated to popularizing it. First of all, as usual, we need to figure out the number of observations in our sample, and we're going to apply it to five years' worth of daily data on S&P 500 returns to check whether S&P 500 returns are normally distributed or not, the regular, usual stuff. So we need to count our observations, and we arrive at 1,258 observations. Then we need to calculate the mean using the average function and the standard deviation using the sample standard deviation function, stdev.s. Then we need to sort our returns from smallest to largest, from the most negative to the most positive. So we need just to copy and paste them over here as values. And then we need to use the data sort tab and sort them from smallest to largest. So here we see that the smallest return is uh, less than minus 4% and the largest return is almost plus 5%. All all good, all as usual. Now we need to assign ranks to these observations and given that they are sorted from smallest to largest, the smallest has the rank of one, the next has a rank of two, and then we can just bottom right click it all the way down to get ranks from one to 1258. Then the empirical distribution would be just the rank divided by the number of observations and we lock the number of observations because it's the same for the whole sample and we nicely progress from 0.08% uh, all the way to 100%, and then we need to fit some theoretical distribution onto this data, and uh, for simplicity, I'll again select the normal distribution by applying the function norm dist with the respective observation of return, the respective mean, we need to lock it over here, and the respective standard deviation, and we need to refer to the cumulative normal distribution function and we bottom like click it all the way down, and we can see that indeed it also does go from 0 to 100, albeit it is uh, very thin-tailed, and it gives uh, a very, very uh, limited uh, probability of returns being minus 4%, given such a mean and standard deviation, while in reality they occur much more frequently. So now we need to apply the Kramer von Mises test to determine whether the deviations from the normal distribution are significant enough, and here we need to apply this procedure for each and every observation we have got. So this uh, formula sums up the differences of some weighted uh, empirical distribution function from the theoretical distribution function and squares them. So it basically calculates the squared sum of deviations from the um, empirical distribution function, which is quite intuitive to understand. And then this term is added, which is basically an adjustment for small sample size, and it, this term is very irrelevant for large samples, as our sample. But we'll throw it in for good measure as well. But here we just need to calculate the difference between two times the rank of this particular observation minus one, divided by two times the total number of observations and and subtract the theoretical distribution function, and then this whole parenthesis should be squared. And then we can bottom black it all the way down and calculate the total uh, stat for the Kramer von Mises test, this T, large T stat, by summing up all of our results for each and every observation as given by this formula, and add one divided by 12 times the number of observations. And this wouldn't change the result much, but this is relevant for small sample sizes, when we have, for example, only 20 observations, or only 30 observations, and so on and so forth. This gives us a t-stat, a large t-stat, of 3.71, and now we need to check whether it's statistically significant or not. 
for uh, statistical significance, the procedure is actually very simple. Uh, there is a, a quite expansive formula that derives a standard deviation and the T statistics for the Kramer von Mises test, but it actually can be quite uh, precisely approximated by just a ratio of 1 over 45. So the standard deviation of this test statistic is the square root of 1 over 45. And turns out that this large T statistic is normally distributed roughly with the following uh, variance, so the following standard deviation. So we actually can just calculate the Z stat by dividing the large T statistic, the Kramer von Mises test statistic, onto the standard deviation and gets a very high Z-stat of uh, almost 25. And uh, almost everything is already clear now, but just for good measure, let's calculate the p-value, which would be two times, as we've got a two-tailed test, one minus normal standard distribution of such a Z-stat cumulative. We close all the parentheses, apply the formula, and get a p-value of roughly zero. Very, very small p-value that signals that S&P 500 returns are definitely not normally distributed. And Kramer von Mises test is actually quite applicable to other distribution functions as well. The procedure doesn't change whether you have a, another theoretical distribution over here under f of x. So it's very flexible, very easy to implement. And if you approximate the variance as just 1 over 45, you get a precise enough result very, very easily. And uh, if you believe in the arguments of some academics that say this test is the most powerful of them all, please do apply it in your own research or as an additional robustness check after you have applied all of the usual Kolmogorov Smirnovs, Anderson Darlings, and so on and so forth. And that's all there is for the Kramer von Mises test for distribution fitting. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on videos you would like me to make. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.